Because of the truly great and timeless adventures crafted for the Super Famicom and Mega Drive, the 16-bit era of video games is considered by many to be the golden age of Japanese RPGs. But for me, I tend to think of the 32-bit era as more worthy of that distinction, in large part due to the plethora of amazing titles released on the original PlayStation. Back in the PS1's prime, the genre attained genuine mainstream popularity outside of Japan for the very first time. Squaresoft was in top form with its newly arranged partnership with Sony, and Namco's Tales series hadn't yet adopted the Madden NFL approach to game release schedules. A few of my favorite role-playing offerings on the system include the fantastic spiritual successor to Landstalker, Alundra, Konami's epic 108-star studded Suikoden, and the game that is pretty much solely responsible for the worldwide JRPG boom of the era, Final Fantasy VII. These three titles, like so many other great Japanese role-playing games, saw international releases much to the delight of RPG fans like myself. However, to no one's surprise, there were quite a few great RPGs on the PlayStation that never ventured outside of their home country, such as the Zelda and SimCity-inspired Community Palm. Love Delic's debut title and possibly the single best case for the games as on argument, Moon Remix RPG Adventure. And then there's the little known game that is the subject of this video, London Seire Tantidam. Published on May 20th, 1999 by Bandai and developed by Unit, whom I hadn't heard of previously, the game advertises itself as a nostalgic adventure RPG. London Seire Tantedan is translated into English as London Holy Agency, at least on its official website. However, a better, more accurate translation that also captures the spirit of the game would be London Spirit Detective Team. Most role-playing games take place in fictional lands and time periods, but London Spirit Detective Team bucks that trend with its 19th century Victorian-era English setting. The hero of this tale is a lion-hearted, energetic 10-year-old orphan boy living on the streets of London all alone. At the onset of the story, he is wandering aimlessly, surviving the best he can and fending off dangers with his trusty slingshot. But all that changes through a chance encounter with a man named John Everett Millay. While he may share his name with a famous painter who also lived in England during the 1800s, this John Everett Millay, who often just goes by Everett, is London's most skilled and respected detective. After witnessing the young hero successfully defend himself from a lowlife trying to steal the boy's only loaf of bread, an impressed Everett extends an offer to take him under his wing as a detective's assistant. After accepting, the player is able to choose a name for the youth. Naturally, for my playthrough, I went with Jimmy. Come on, he certainly looks like a Jimmy, don't you think? From that day forward, the boy is given a room in the spacious attic of Everett's splendid home and becomes a full-fledged apprentice to London's great detective. With that set up, you may be thinking that London's spirit detective team sounds a lot like Sherlock Holmes meets Oliver Twist, two characters in classic literature who coincidentally sprung from the era the game takes place in. And you'd be right, after you toss in some steampunk, anime, and supernatural elements. The protagonist, who we'll just refer to as Jimmy from here on, is only an assistant detective, but more often than not, he's responsible for solving cases independently from Everett, who is usually pressed with larger affairs of his own. Jimmy won't be alone in his work, however, as he soon forms a small detective team comprised of two other kids. First off, there's Ares Ivory, a cute, sometimes charming, but oftentimes brash and bossy 12-year-old girl with an iron will. Her motivations for becoming an assistant detective mostly revolve around her desire to work with her crush, Everett, and being bored. But to her disappointment, she ends up partnering up with Jimmy and will often voice her displeasure of having to work with the boy two years her junior. Despite her minor character flaws though, she is a loyal friend and a vital member of the detective team. The other teammate is a pudgy six-year-old boy who acts as Jimmy's sidekick affectionately addressing him as Big Brother and following him around anywhere and everywhere he goes. This little guy is never named throughout the entire game and is just known as Eibel, which means partner in English, though I think Buddy suits the situation best. His never-ending devotion and admiration for the protagonist and his childish demeanor serve to provide much of the game's comedy relief. Buddy is a pure joy, so odd, amusing, and cute as a damn button. Most of the time, he's either eating, sleeping, falling from high places, or landing on the receiving end of some slapstick violence. 
he's pretty much oblivious to the weight of the serious events taking place around him, and will often just doodle pictures of fish as the characters go off on their important dialogue. The amount of punishment he takes is flat out comical, and his antics are responsible for more than a few laugh out loud moments. It seems that he's an orphan or a runaway child too, which makes his role as a punching bag seem kind of sad. But he always bounces back from everything as if nothing happened and in high spirits. Buddy is the best sort of buddy you can have and is definitely my favorite character in London Spirit Detective Team. This trio of children make up the main team, but there is one more person that will join up from time to time, an enigmatic young man named Virgil. He's meek, soft-spoken, shies away from large groups of people, and generally lacks any sort of confidence or vigor. But with Virgil there's more than meets the eye, as his knowledge of ghosts, spirits, and otherworldly beings is second to none. Knowledge that is far and beyond what any human should realistically possess. As mentioned earlier, London Spirit Detective Team breaks from its RPG peers by centering its narrative around an actual time period and place in the real world. While the specific dates in which everything takes place are never really mentioned, it can be inferred that the year is 1851 since many of the events in the game revolve around the opening of the Great Exhibition, or the first ever World's Fair. This period in British history is often considered its golden age, a time of great advancement for the island nation, especially in industry and technology. The art direction of London Spirit Detective Team captures that feeling, though it does take quite a bit of artistic license in its representation of Victorian London. Nearly every street in the great city is lined with long stretching networks of pipes that provide power to steam operated machines and mechanisms, most of which could have never existed in the mid 19th century, much less in the century that would follow. I mean, in this game's Victorian London, there are huge mechanical humanoid war machines and robotic maids, which gives the atmosphere a steampunk anime kind of feel. It's not all portrayals of high fantasy, however, as the lifestyles of the budding middle class of the time as well as the impoverished, are on full display, and overall there's a good balance of realism and imagination in its presentation of the period. The isometrically drawn environments are very easy on the eyes, although in some places there are some ugly compression blemishes resembling low quality JPEG images. Another big way in which the game separates itself from others in the genre is by focusing on a smaller, more restrained story that unfolds entirely in just one city, that city being London, of course. There's no grand, globe-trotting, save-the-world adventure to be found here, which is a breath of fresh air in my opinion. London Spirit Detective Team plays out like a television series, split up into a prologue and 19 different episodes. Each episode focuses on a single case that needs to be solved by the team, though a larger, overarching plot is woven little by little until it culminates at the very end of the game. The first few cases start off rather grounded in reality, but eventually the team will start unraveling a secret plan to take over the city of London, as well as experience the paranormal phenomena the title of the game suggests. Throughout their many adventures, the trio of kid detectives will meet a memorable cast of supporting characters and villains. I'd say the most prominent NPC other than Everett is William Blake, an older gentleman who epitomizes the manners and values of the previous era but also lives a double life as the Spectre, a retired thief shrouded in mystery with a long history of dealing with Everett as a rival, and perhaps even more. There's Young Ghost, a new thief on the block who is as beautiful as she is clumsy. Then there's Professor Sidal, a female scientist working at the Great Exhibition who has captured the heart of London's most skilled detective, but wants nothing to do with him. As stated before, Everett has the same name as a famous painter from the 1800s, but his is not the only case of a character named after a famous English artist from the era. Others, such as Professor Sidal, the Spectre, and the ultimate antagonist of the game, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, aka the Man of Steam, all derive their names from prominent figures in the 19th century art scene. London Spirit Detective Team takes the player through a lot of touching and emotional moments. Padded with a whole lot of humor along the way, this game delivers a message of the potential dangers of becoming overly reliant on technical innovations, but it never takes itself too seriously. There are a lot of gags that seem like they're straight out of an anime from the 80s or 90s, though they never hit you over the head so much that they become annoying. 
Everett is the consummate professional, but his Achilles heel is his aforementioned love of Professor Siddall, a weakness that will eventually be exploited by his enemies. A visiting detective from America, Miss Holstein, is the definition of a goofy stereotype, with her cowboy attire, manner of speaking that just screams bimbo, and rather generous assets. Swing, swing, temple. And there's a character the team meets in Chapter 15 named Wayne Campbell, who is the president of Wayne and Garth Industries. Hold up, a Wayne's World reference in a JRPG? And it wasn't something that working designs had to toss in with a localization job? Flabbergasting! Aside from the storyline cases, Jimmy and friends can accept jobs from a detective agency, as well as help out random people out and about in the city. These side quests have objectives ranging from the classic lost cat scenario, helping a man court the woman of his dreams, reconnecting a mother and son after a decade of lost contact, and even playing the role of dad at a make-believe tea party with some little girls. Yep. Since this is a game about detective work, most of the optional cases require searching areas and talking with several people. They're never too difficult, and completing them often rewards the player with a healthy sum of British pounds. You won't receive your payment immediately though, and you'll have to visit the bank to get the cash, where you also get paid for your work on the storyline missions. With his earnings, Jimmy can purchase items to help him and his friends survive the many battles they'll face throughout the game. Pubs take the place of inns found in traditional role-playing games, since you can order meals at them to completely recover your health. You can also buy edible items here like bread and tea to go. You won't save here like you typically would at an inn, but that's fine, because London Spirit Detective Team is one of those rare JRPGs that lets you record progress anywhere and anytime you'd like outside of battle. Tool stores are stocked with things that cure ailments and are used to attack foes, and the tailor is where headwear, footwear, and body apparel are purchased, all which serve as armor. At the antique shop, you can buy weapons and accessories for your party, as well as sell rare items to line your pockets with even more money. If you're in the mood for reading, you can buy newspapers for £5 a pop, though a lot of the news will just celebrate the exploits of the heroes. Finally, there's a small Chinatown area which sells many of the items you can find in Greater London, but also provides special goods imported from the Far East. Aside from shops, other items in the game world can also be found on the ground, marked with a faint yellow sparkle. The locations of these items and what you're able to find change every episode, often tailored to align with the path the story mission will take you on, so it's a good idea to keep an eye out for them with each new case. Enemy encounters in London Spirit Detective Team are random and will usually only occur at locations that serve as dungeons, as well as on the streets when night falls. If you're even remotely familiar with JRPGs, you'll immediately know what to do during these turn-based fights. Each character has standard attacks, may use restorative or offensive items, and has the option to execute special moves that consume SP or spiritual points. Up to three weapons can be equipped per party member which can in turn be cycled through during battles, providing the player with different types of attacks and special moves. The speed at which a character can perform his or her next moves depended on their previous action, with stronger attacks typically requiring two enemy turns to recover from. All in all, the battle system in this game is pretty standard, nothing too different from the norm, though characters can move around the field with certain commands. There's a bit of light strategy involved with this mechanic, as some actions may be inaccessible if there is not sufficient space to perform them, or an ally is blocking the path of an attack. Jimmy's arsenal includes slingshots, catapults, and fireworks. Ares utilizes umbrellas, books, and megaphones. And the mighty little buddy has an array of shovels, balls, and pyrotechnics at his disposal. But he often performs unusual actions or uses his whole body to hurt opponents. Though his weapon of choice is a gun, Virgil fulfills the role of this game's mage and has access to a range of elemental magic spells and the ability to summon spirits with a special stone in his possession. There are 22 spirits that are able to improve the status or heal the party, or cause great damage to your adversaries. The look of these spirits are quite interesting and unique, as they were created by famed artist, sculptor, and creature designer Yasushi Nirasawa, who is probably most well known for his work on several of the Kamen Rider story arcs. These summons are the most useful and powerful attacks in the entire game, so it's a shame they'll rarely be used, as Virgil only joins up a handful of times in select episodes.
enemy variety is decent in London Spirit Detective Team, and while there are quite a bit of palette swaps for certain enemy types, the designs are pretty cool. Many of the boss fights can be a little underwhelming, but there are also several really intriguing ones here as well. When you engage in battle, the screen goes black for a moment to shift gears, but the fight ensues without changing the locale to a generic background, as is so common in the role-playing genre. Since that's the case, you'll only be attacked in areas wide enough to play host to a battle. The encounter rate is pretty reasonable, though a bit wonky at times, as there's a chance of being thrown into another fight immediately after one finishes up. When victorious, the party gains experience and has the potential to receive an item from fallen enemies. Leveling up increases all the basic stats, of course, but every few levels a new skill will be learned, or the strength of those already known will become more powerful. Unfortunately, you'll receive no money after a battle. At least not immediately. City Hall rewards the detectives with payouts determined by how many baddies they've defeated, and also with special points to be exchanged for a long list of goods, including some of the best weapons and gear there is. It's an interesting attempt at realism in a game that includes robotic cat enemies and evil horse ghosts. Though it can sometimes be a bit repetitive, the music in the game is decent and fits each situation well, and there are a few really catchy themes. Though while I personally like the soundtrack, I don't see it as something most will feel that compelled to listen to outside of the game. I'd say the only really big gripe I have with London Spirit Detective Team overall is with its dungeons, as they often drag on needlessly for far too long and lack much variety from room to room, if at all, usually leading to tedium and confusion. The game length comes up a bit short for an RPG, as I completed all episodes and side quests in a little over 15 hours, but honestly, for this game that length seemed just about right. And while it's also a bit on the easy side, its pace and progression feel natural, and thankfully I never have the need to grind for levels, something that plagues so many role-playing games, even the great ones. The main plotline comes to a logical, mostly satisfying conclusion, and things are set up perfectly for continuing the escapades of London's young spirit detective team in future sequels, which sadly never came to be. London Spirit Detective Team is not the best RPG on the PlayStation. It's not an epic adventure with a cast of hundreds of thousands. And it's not going to keep you up late for weeks as you obsessively work towards peeking at its end credits. But for what it is, it still provides an excellent, memorable experience that's quite a bit different from the standard role-playing fare. Sure, with a little more polish, it may have gone down as one of the more well-known classic games on the system but I found a lot of charm in its simplicity and had an absolute blast from start to finish. And that's saying a lot for me, since I find it hard to go back and enjoy RPGs from the era, even the games I loved so much from my youth. The game is very cheap, much like a majority of Japanese PS1 RPGs, though it can be a bit hard to find. I would highly recommend this game to any role-playing game fan, but unfortunately, you'll have to be able to read Japanese to maximize your enjoyment from it since as of now there are no English fan translations, and there don't seem to be any in the works. London Seire Tante Dan is a quaint, special little role-playing game with some neat alternate history and a great cast that had the potential to become so much more. Looking back on it in a few years, I'm sure I'll really think of it as a nostalgic adventure RPG in the personal sense. Well anyway, now that I'm done inspecting another Japan-only video gaming gem, time to get to work on my next case. Until I've cracked that one, I guess I'll just say thank you for watching this episode of Import Gaming for the Win. And until next time, this is Jimmy Hoppa. Take care.